All right, so uh, uh, in uh, this demo, I'll be uh, showing how you can use the uh, model first capability in uh, the uh, entity framework and the entity designer that ships in uh, Visual Studio 2010. Um, so what I have here is a, a database in SQL Azure that I've uh, just created. So I've got my sales database. Um, it is a brand new database, so we don't actually have anything in it. Um, and I can show that uh, by going into my uh, SQL Server Management Studio and uh, looking at the tables, you can see that uh, we don't actually have anything in, in here. So at this point, what I'm going to do is uh, switch into uh, Visual Studio, and we're going to uh, uh, essentially create uh, a data model, uh, see how the Entity Designer can help us create that data model and uh, eventually uh, deploy that into the database. Uh, and then finally, we'll close the demo by uh, just doing uh, some very basic uh, data access uh, uh, using the entity framework against uh, that SQL Azure database. So let me go ahead and create a new project. Uh, this is a simple demo, so I'm going to just go with a straightforward uh, console application uh, in C Sharp. And so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is add a new item. Uh, and uh, really, uh, since I'm interested in adding an, an entity data model to my app, I'm going to choose the ADO.NET entity data model template. And let's uh, call this uh, sales.edmx. Now, I could choose to reverse engineer entity, uh, entity types uh, from a database, but because I'm doing model first, I'm going to choose an empty model. And at this point, I have a canvas, and I can use this to uh, effectively uh, describe my model. So let's start adding a few entity types here. Uh, I'm going to create a customer type. Um, I'm not using any inheritance in this model, so we're going to leave the base type uh, as none. A uh, set of customer uh, is uh, going to be called uh, customers, and we're going to choose the standard uh, primary key uh, options there. Now I'm going to add a few properties here. So customer has a name, an address, city, state, and zip. So that's uh, the customer uh, entity that I want to use. Uh, let's go ahead and create another entity and uh, we're going to uh, create an order. Again, no base type. Uh, entity sets called orders and we'll leave the default. Uh, for this one, I'm going to just add an order date uh, and a status. And one of the things I want to do is to set uh, the uh, data type of my order date um, so that it's actually a date time. So I'm done with that and lastly I'm going to add an association between these two entity types. So uh, uh, what I want is to say that uh, a customer can have many orders so I have a one-to-many relationship between customer and order and I'm also choosing to have navigation properties so this allows me to say that given an entity uh, say customer I can uh, navigate to all of the associated orders and vice versa. Um, I'm also choosing to add foreign key properties to my uh, uh, entities. So that's uh, effectively my uh, model. Um, now I'm going to show you the, uh, uh, the power of the entity data model uh, by doing one last uh, adjustment to this model. I know that this is a set of related fields um, and I want to refactor that into a, a separate type. So I'm going to call this customer address uh, and I'm going to call my property address. So you can see that we've uh, done some changes to our modeling to better reflect uh, uh, the, the kind of richness that we want in our data model. So at this point I'm happy with, uh, uh, with my data model and I'm going to choose to deploy this uh, to a database. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, generate database from model. Uh, I don't already have a connection, so I'm going to specify the uh, connection, uh, in this case the uh, SQL Azure instance that uh, my database sits on, and, uh, and I'm also going to use SQL Server authentication and provide my uh, credentials. So finally, I'm going to go ahead and choose the uh, database that I want to work with. In this case, it's sales, and uh, hit OK. Uh, I'm also going to choose uh, uh, some uh, options here. So I'm going to uh, include the sensitive data in the connection string for demo purposes. This, is, uh, this has security implications, so you'll want to think about it before you do this. Uh, and uh, we're going to just go through. So you can see that we have a DDL, a data definition language script, uh, 
created for us that will allow us to deploy this uh, schema to the database. Now you can see that even though I had uh, refactored the address properties into a separate type, the table actually includes the includes what would show up in the uh, logical data model. Um, and, and so uh, you can see that the designer is doing some, some work for you to actually uh, map from the entity data model into the relational model. Uh, we also have a, a foreign key association set up between the two entity types. So at this point, I'm happy with this. And uh, what I can choose to do now is uh, to deploy this to the database. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to first connect to my SQL Azure database. And then I'm going to pick sales uh, and uh, execute this on that database. So let's go back to uh, SQL Server Management Studio and take a look. And you can see that I have my uh, uh, tables uh, deployed onto my SQL Azure instance. At this point, I can start uh, using the entity framework uh, to do data access against this database. So let's go ahead and write some code. So in my, uh, uh, in my uh, main method, I'm going to uh, fire up a new object context and insert a customer. Let's see how we can do that. So we're going to uh, instantiate my context uh, called uh, sales container. And uh, the first thing I want to do is really create a customer. So var c equals new customer. And uh, let's uh, set some properties. So name John uh, and address uh, is a new customer address with address uh, and a few other fields set up. State and zip. And so that's, uh, that's the customer entity that we are interested in. And then I can choose to uh, just insert this uh, into the database. Let's uh, use uh, db dot add to customers method. And I simply pass in uh, the object. Finally, I can tell uh, the context to save changes. And uh, that's, uh, that's it for uh, uh, the amount of code that I have to write to fire up, a, you know, to instantiate a new customer, and to save that instance uh, to the database. Let's run this. And I'm going to go back into SQL Server Management Studio and uh, select from that table. And you can see that the data that, uh, that I created was successfully inserted into the database. So uh, to summarize, uh, we use the entity designer to uh, create a brand new model. Um, we then use the uh, update um, or generate uh, database uh, capability in model first to uh, generate a DDL script that we could then deploy to the database. And finally, we use the uh, entity framework APIs to uh, uh, do some very basic object relational mapping and to create uh, some data in the database. And all of that was done in really just a few minutes and uh, a couple of lines of code. So uh, you can see how powerful the entity framework is in uh, giving you uh, a productive way to build uh, uh, data access into your applications. And I hope that this has uh, uh, whet your appetite to uh, uh, go on and take, uh, take a closer look at some of the uh, more exciting features uh, in Entity Framework uh, for all. So Faisal, can you actually take us through, uh, you, we went through an insert, can you actually take us through, say, a select or extracting data out using EF? Oh, sure. Now we could, uh, you know, we could just go to the same, uh, uh, same piece of code and see how we can uh, write a link query to uh, uh, output some of the data that's in the database. So uh, I can fire up a query um, and say from uh, C in DB dot customers, uh, select C. Uh, now I could, you know, choose to insert a where clause here or anything that I want to do for filtering. And then what I can do is uh, say for each customer C in, in that query, uh, let's write line customer name.
and uh, just so we can see our output let's put a read line here and let's run through this so now you can see that it went and fetched all the customers in this case we only have a single customer and uh, we're getting objects back from the database uh, and in this case we're printing it out we could just as easily make a change uh, to that data and save it back uh, again in just a couple of lines of code right and then so essentially that link statement that you wrote where you say var q equals uh, that's essentially translating that into say like a select star from customers t sql statement Is exactly that yeah it's 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 just translating it's it's taking this link query which is really um uh described in terms of um you know uh expressions that uh, uh that you have here in c sharp uh and the entity framework is actually translating that into transact sql uh, that can be executed on the database great thanks thank you